Welcome to Chuck Builds. This is the first video of our smart home series where I'm gonna tell you how a Raspberry Pi or an old computer off of eBay can supercharge your smart home for free using software called Home Assistant. Follow along to this series to learn more and how to install it yourself. Does your smart home not feel that smart? Do you have all these different devices and you're stuck to these apps that can only turn them on and off at a certain time of day? Are you overwhelmed by how many apps are on your phone and how little control you have to make them speak together? What if we could roll that back into a simpler solution, a solution called Home Assistant, a single app to rule them all. Home Assistant is free, open source, powerful, easy to set up, and so customizable to solve any problem in your smart home. The community for Home Assistant helps make it so easy to recommend. There's tons of resources available on the internet to get new ideas, help with issues you might be having, or see how somebody else configured a device that you already have. Additionally, the subreddit for it has tons of fun little ideas on what you can add to your smart home, and I can sometimes find setup and configuration files in the comments that I can't find elsewhere. People also share their blueprints. Blueprints are shareable automations that help you get a complex or advanced automation set up easily with just a few clicks and it helps that there's tons of them available on the internet for free. Automations will be the backbone of your smart home, enabling you to have results without having to pull your phone out and touch any buttons. Here are some of my favorite automations. This one, when I walk into my backyard, my lights automatically turn on and I get a notification on my phone that someone's back there. Some automations can be simple, like turning on a light when you open the door using existing sensors from your home security system. Others can be more complex, using many different devices and sensors working together to protect your home, such as this one that turns off my water when a leak is detected, and notifies my phone exactly where the leak was detected. This next automation is a little silly, but it's been a huge quality of life improvement for me. Instead of fumbling for my keys outside my garage door, it automatically unlocks when it knows I'm home and exiting out the back door. The most visible automation I have is my automatic lights that turn on when you enter a room and change colors throughout the day. If you have something like Plex, when you hit play, it'll automatically turn off the lights in the room for a full movie theater effect. This has been wildly popular with guests that enter my home and realize I haven't touched a light switch in years. My DIY home security system is my most complex automation. By using a combination of sensors, I've created several different varieties of arming my system that is greatly customized to my needs. The system can contact local authorities with faster response times and cheaper monthly subscription than any comparable system on the market. There are endless possibilities for creating automations. I hope to cover some of the ones on the screen right now in a future video, but more than that, I hope to give you the tools to create your automations that you need yourself. To recap, Home Assistant is a free, open source, and powerful software that you run inside of your home on your own hardware to control your existing and future smart home products. It has a huge community, is very customizable, it allows you to control all your products from just one application, and it enables your different products to talk to each other and allow you to create automations to make your smart home feel smart. I can't recommend Home Assistant enough, but even if you don't go the Home Assistant route, there's some topics I'd like to cover for your smart home journey. Many of you have only used the apps and devices for simple tasks, like unlocking a door or changing a the thermostat without getting out of bed. Many of you have never installed custom software or operating systems such as Home Assistant like we're gonna do in a future video. This might be a totally new experience and this is where the mindset shift comes in. Shift your mindset from using what is given to creating what you need. You don't need to go crazy at the beginning. Identify a use case or want and work towards solving that in the simplest terms. Don't be afraid to break out of your ecosystem. Just because you've been using Amazon Alexa or Google Home approved products up until now, don't feel that you continue to have to. With Home Assistant, you should check for compatibility first, but once you've verified it's supported, go and try that competitor's device. Go get that cheap sensor that you think will look better in your living room. Don't be afraid to explore the unknown. Just make sure someone has it working on the Home Assistant form before ordering or know that the protocol is supported, such as Zigbee, Z-Wave. Also, don't be afraid to break things. I'll show you how to keep backups so you can take a leap of faith every now and then and know that you'll be fine if it doesn't work out. Remember, it's a journey. Things will rarely work the first time. 
be resilient, keep at it, and work to dial things in. For example, if you decide to try motion-activated lights, I guarantee there will be a time that the lights turn off on you. You'll have to keep making adjustments until it works. On the same note, be upfront with household members and be open to receiving feedback to make sure that your devices work for everyone. It's easy to get carried away when things start to work well. I advise you to pace yourself. Don't buy a bunch of devices all at once. Try to spread it out so you actually have time to integrate them into your smart home. My last comment will be about internet connected devices. Wi-Fi is not always the best route for smart home devices. Don't be reliant on third party companies and their servers for your devices to work. Companies get hacked, go out of business and add fees iHome and Insteon left their customers stranded when the servers turned off post-bankruptcy. I would strongly encourage certain devices be local, even if it is on Wi-Fi via Tasmoda or MQTT. For devices that you'll have a large quantity of, such as light bulbs, motion, moisture, or temperature sensors, I would highly encourage that you explore Zigbee or Z-Wave, and I'll cover this in a future video. I hope this video has been informative. If you're thinking about getting a smarter smart home, I hope you'll consider Home Assistant. I've really enjoyed the journey of getting this set up personally and have had many friends reach out trying to have similar features in their home, which is why I started this video series. Um, if you don't even know where to begin, I hope you'll follow along with the next few videos. I'll show you what hardware you need, exactly how to set it up and how to connect your first few devices. I hope in the future to also have videos on various automations that I am using to help inspire what you can do and make it easier to get off the ground with some simple, simple features. Please let me know if there's anything that's unclear, anything I can help you with, or if you have any questions for a unique scenario, I'm more than happy to help and look forward to the, taking you on this journey.